Hello and welcome back to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch. Uh, I've got Stephen James Sidwell here and Chris Francis Stark. <laughs> Nice. Why, yeah, okay. the, why the full names today? Well, I just thought, you know, we're in a new year now and um, we are, It's maybe we should change it all up. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, let's start with that and see where it evolves. What's your one? James. James. Hey, what's yours? You didn't say yours. James. James as well. James. Oh, is it? Yeah. PJ. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what James your name? Do you know why you've inherited that name? Is that uh, no, any no, reason? No family, no... No granddads. I mean, I've got granddads, but it's not after them. My, my, my James is, is my, bizarrely throughout. Like my, my dad and his dad are are James. Their first name is James, it's passed down. But they call their middle name. So my, my dad's name's Bruce. Yeah, but ha- so hang on. So his never in, on his passport will be James Bruce Crouch. Really? But he's called Bruce. Why? Whereas his oh, dad would, was, would be James Michael. Yeah. But it's called Mike. So, I'm the only one who's. I should be James, James Peter, but be called Peter. But are you passing down the middle name James to your kids? No. Well, you got that's you sort of got to do that, haven't do you? Do you think? I think so. I think it's kind of you're given a middle name, and it's like Francis in my family seems to have been passed down. So I felt obliged to then. Oh, you done it as well? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I've done it to my young, my uh, yeah, my last son. Right. But what I mean is, I don't know who this Francis is. So at some point, my ancestry, there's some character called Francis, who obviously meant a lot to someone, and now has been passed down without question. I don't know who he is. Could be a wrong one. I think it seems quite appealing going on that show, right, to learn about your ancestors. You must have been asked. Yeah, yeah. But you I'm must have been asked. Nervy, it? It That's what I'm saying. Sometimes, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. You assume it's going to be fine. For Steve, like no, also you can't. Be, I, don't I could be. be I could be right in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can be associated to that. You know, you can't. I don't think you could judge someone from what your ancestors. Of course, you can. Done. You think? I or think. Would you look at me differently if my ancestors were, you know, I don't know something really bad? What? Would you look at me differently? You can't. I, I, I think you don't. can't help but feel you will have inherited some of the traits, traits. of, <laughs> you know, it's some. In, and they think? they got it's some, in the blood. It's in the blood. <laughs> It's in there somewhere if, <laughs> if if needs be. I'd love us to all do something like that. I would love us to explore it. Because I'd be interested to know in the whole sort of football argument of nature versus nurture, mm. if there is something that is kind of a product of all your ancestors and that, which made you two exceptionally good at football and me slightly less than average, What what is the difference? Were your ancestors playing the original game? I don't know. Um... I've done the test, the saliva test with the. Is that, is that yeah, but, but, but one, that's it? yeah, but that sort of tells you what you're made up in general stats, oh, yeah. right? What I think we need is someone to come and investigate the Sidwell family tree. So, like for example, <laughs> for example, did, I think you two, because you've got a bit of an ego on you both, haven't you? Like, you you both probably assume you're the most successful person to ever have existed in your family tree. Present, present family tree, yeah. I mean... Do you think that? I've never really thought that. <laughs> well, it's probably true. Uh, I mean, uh, you're, you're basically, what you're getting at, where does the tanned dark skin come from, isn't it? That's what you're looking at. I'm saying, well, mate, I'm just saying, there's probably stories there. Something has made the great Steve Sidwell the great Steve Sidwell. Something's happened. It's not just down to you. It's your ancestors as well. And I'd love to learn a bit more about that. I think it'd be a fascinating dive into what makes Let's elite footballers... It. Let's all do it. Let's yeah. all do it. Well, I, you know, having said that, I did. I did manage to prick my finger, and I am. I'm not gluten intolerant. <laughs> did you do your Christmas present? I did it, did yeah. You? Well, I had to buy my own because that one broke. Didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. But uh, yeah, I, I was actually interested. And, was that a relief? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it would have been similar if I was gluten intolerant as well. But, yeah. You know, um, slightly different uh, sort of course here. The Neil Warnock podcast, the last two that have gone out have been exceptionally well received. <clears throat> yeah. He yeah. does say the same thing over and over again. Are you with me? Yeah? Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, we were with him all the way. <laughs> and I'm glad about that. He was a great he said, guest. He said it so many times, didn't he? And, and you know, we've talked about this before, but obviously you know, getting into to, to, to this year. What Have you got a dream guest now? We achieved Elton last oh, year, Neil yeah. Warnock. You know, there was uh, Idris Elba. You know, there was lots of, lots of good guests on there. Jason Sakudis. Mm. Anyone you, you fancy this year? 
Yeah, there is. Uh, Perhaps get in touch as well if you want to, who, who you want on. No, you're right to do this because occasionally we do sort of throw it out there and get a bit of a refresh and it's a bit of a kick up the ass for all of us to kind of um, get some of these people on. Because, you know, we I really do think we can have anyone on. I quite like it when it's like a footballer, a, someone from a different, slightly different trade, but mm. in, in the circles of football, perhaps. I quite liked it when we split it up. Elton John was a good shout, you really, know? Really good. I'd love Bex on. I've mm. said this to you for, for years. Sure. Um, I still think you're reluctant to put the message in, but, yeah. you know, no, at some point it no, would be great to get I him think on. We should, we should definitely try and get him on, yeah? Mm. I've got Tips? a feeling 24 could be big. I think, it's, I think it's, it could potentially be one of the biggest. Mm. What? Ever. What, just years? <laughs> well, do you uh, mean the podcast? That's what I'm aiming for, personally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as in guest-wise, I think he's potentially okay. got... Well, is there anyone, is there anyone just um, looking back on... Think of young wow. Sids, right? <laughs> <laughs> we saw him on the other <laughs> What's What? Chicken and fall down. What would be the dream? Him. If I was to say to you, you can, we can get anyone on this podcast. God, that's... Is there, put, is there... put it on me a little bit there. Well, uh, it can, and it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be the most famous person. It just needs to be personal to you. Let me come back to you. All right, especially for a footballer, I think that'd be nice. Like yeah. someone that you really, yeah, really looked up to when you were younger. Yeah, I reckon we can. We you know we can in oh, with a good shout of getting anyone on. Can do it a million percent. Mm. Crouchy, got anyone that you want? On? Um, who would I like on? Do you know, like I quite Liam Gallagher was a good one, wasn't it? We had him on. <laughs> yeah, um, someone on that kind of. That kind of pathway. Do you know what I'd like on? Who, who, who we loved at the darts? Luke Littler. I'd like to speak to oh. him. I think, you know, sometimes you, yeah. you have people that burst on the scene at kind of 16. And I think they had a list when I was watching darts. They had, they had a list of the people that went on. Uh, we won things at 16. Obviously, it was before he lost. But it's like Martina Hingis, obviously, like Wayne Rooney. There was people at 16 when they weren't achieved. And they've all gone on to like massive things. I just... It'd be interesting to see where his head's at, like at this age. But do you think that's part of the problem? Is he's had this massive success, age sixteen, that in a weird kind of way, f to keep Luke Littler with the best possible opportunities of doing the very best he can, because he's managed to get this far on his own without all this attention mm -hmm. and everything. And a lot of the criticism is suddenly he's out doing all interviews and things like that. Maybe the best thing we could do as a podcast is almost run a campaign to say, in fact, we're not going to get you on the podcast. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Like, Keep we'll me. be the only media outlet yeah, yeah, yeah. that's going to publicly you. go out there and say we don't want Luke on because we want him to concentrate Keep on his, his darts. face uh, on the ground. Yeah, I, fair enough. I, I, I don't know. I just think that might be. But you know, if you have that success age sixteen, it can. And I, I don't. I'm not saying this to kind of preempt anything that can happen with him. But this amount of weird attention that appears, you must have seen it have, I guess, galvanised some players and people but it does have a negative effect mm. as well you must like have it. seen it yeah. i wouldn't like it personally no. i don't know how you were like I, at 16 i was miles off it really like i didn't get kind of well known really i mean I, even when i was playing for qpr at, not, at 18 and portsmouth at 19 i was still playing the championship and i was kind of getting away with it so only when i went to villa people in football started recognizing me but only when i played for england really that i was like kind of on that on that level where people everywhere kind of recognise you. But I was 23 then and I was still making mistakes. Yeah. I can't think of 60, uh, seven more years. Yeah. Do you think do you this sort of attention, mad. do you think it has, on the balance of things, is it more detrimental than positive? Because in one way, I guess you get all your sponsorship and the increased awareness means he's doing Premier League and all, all that sort of yeah, thing. It's, it's, good, it's good for him in it some It depends ways. on the individual. If, they, if they've got the mindset that can carry it off and that can do it, some, some can't. I don't mm. think Joe Cole look at Joe like Joe when he was 14 they had hype mm. when he was 14 see some of those players as well have fallen by the wayside like yeah. <laughs> players that I've played with like uh, in the youth team who were just so far ahead of everyone and then just struggle to kind of cope with it all mm. um, and, and struggle to meet the demands or the pressure really I, I would I would never I wouldn't change my path at all I think it gave me a good grounding and then you yeah. know things happened for me at the right time I could cope with it Mm. Well, maybe that's what we do with Luke. We give him a couple more years, let him get, uh, you know, yeah. win win the worlds at some point, mm. and then invite him on the podcast after that. Mm. And until then, should we until just operate a policy of one. everyone should leave Luke Littler alone? Mm. Let, yeah, him do, no, let him do his I, dance. I, I totally agree. <laughs> Unless he wants to come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just, but it has to be his choice. Oh yeah, listen, you know, like, I've, hopefully he's got good people around him. We're making yeah. a stand. We do not want Luke Litter on the podcast for his own we're, good. We're helping him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So just talking of darts, quickly before we move on, um, this question came up over Christmas and it, it was a sparked a huge debate. Um, it was, what do you think is harder out of these three, put these three in order, a hole in one, a one four seven, snooker maximum break, or a nine darter? Oh, I think the so hole in one, okay, the, so I think, the, I think a hole in one is the easiest in my opinion, because I think even though you're aiming for that and everyone, you're not realistically hoping to get it in. So it's a it's a relaxed hit and hope yeah. situation. My, my, my problem is, I think even if you're a bad golfer, yeah. you can get a hole in one. Yeah. yeah. Whereas for me, one four seven is unachievable for anyone yeah. who's not a proper snooker player. Yeah. A nine darter even, right? It's still nine darts. You know, I, it's I, so hard. I think the nine data is harder than one four seven. Than one four seven. See, this is this spark debate. I was I'm the same. So I, we were in agreement. Yeah. So I think again the um, easiest out of the lot, which is crazy to say it, would be a hole in one. Yeah. 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 Because you could, you know, if it's 130 yards, it's ridiculous. But you, every yeah. time you have a shot, you go, "This could go in." Yeah. yeah. So it's two and three, isn't it? It's what's the hardest out of a one four mm. seven and a nine dart. I think. I think the hardest is one four seven. I do, as but well. then nine darts. Mm. Shall I tell you why? Because I think the only th reason I say the darts over is because the one four seven, I think is a it, it's kind of a well rehearsed routine. Whereas I think the darts, it as it gets increasingly more difficult. I think I don't know the pressure of it or to to get nine darts. Do you not think this, the pressure of the one four seven? Well, it does seven. increase. As soon as when you get to the yellow, yeah, the green, you know what I mean, the brown, yeah, then you've got the black and it's a tight one for the yeah. one four seven. Like yeah. the amount of pressure on well, that think, black. Yeah. yeah, it was a big one. It sparked it sparked a bit of controversy. You've there both gone one four sevens. On yeah, that. yeah. I mean, you're yeah. probably right. No, listen. I think a nine darters are absolutely exceptional. And the thing is, it's probably. It's harder probably for a professional darts player to get a nine darter than it is for a professional snooker player mm. to get a one four seven. Mm. If you know what I mean, because mm. if you're for Ronnie, for instance, has got loads of them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think darts players have multiple nine darters, yeah. do they? Yeah. Because it's, I think it's more difficult for a professional. Not I'm as a, you know, a, a novice, whatever. <laughs> I, you could get lucky with a nine darter. There's no way. <laughs> There's no you way. Get lucky you could. Nine darts. You could. I mean, you could. It's nine darts. Wow. I no, but like, how many shots? How many six shots? Six yeah. lipsticks. <laughs> and then yeah, you yeah, finish right. it off. All right. Okay. It's obviously ridiculous. But what I'm saying is, yeah, I know you there's, mean. So, there's so many shots to go through and so yeah. many different variations. Where if you've got a still dartboard and a, you know, whereas, you know, there's so many variations of a snooker table and you've got so many more shots to get through. Do you think, are you doing this, if you're doing this properly, then you need to test it with a novice, right? So you need, say, but there's abs no way in a room and she's it. not allowed to leave until she's hit, she's done 147. Right. How many days that would take? <laughs> <laughs> oh, You'd be happy with that. Against, you to lock <laughs> against then, I'll she goes out, in a room and how long would it take her for a nine, <laughs> nine dar? So you're asking me to lock Abby away in a dark room I'm saying if she was and, willing to do it for charity, to, I'd sponsor her. Fucking charity? We wouldn't see her. She'd come out of a beard this long. <laughs> but how many days... I'd be arrested. How many days 100%. would it take Cathy Clancy to, to do nine darts? Is, do you want her to do a nine dart? That's or the thing. I reckon one, four, she'd, have, seven. she'd have more chance at the nine darter. Because she knows how to hold a dart. She can't hold a cue straight away. I think she'd have more chance. Listen, you know, we'll, yeah, well, we'll they, try this for charity, but you don't, might not see us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see us for about oh, 15 years. Mate, I beg you let me ask her if she'd do it for charity. <laughs> like, can you, but you're, you, I guess you're right. If this is the test of what's more difficult, I think it would take Abby Clancy long, more days or weeks to come out of that room having completed a 147. That's what than, I think. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. And I think that go. clears up our argument. It. It's, you know what I mean? Right. What I'm saying is I think she could, <laughs> she could get uh, a nine data in three years. <laughs> Consistently. I'd love to test it. Food and water. 
just dark. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's not that she's deprived of anything. Oh, okay. It's just so she, she has to have a basement or anything. Yeah, she, yeah, I don't know why. I like the idea of a bit sort of. <laughs> sort of <laughs> she's in a room. It's <laughs> just. It's not even a game room. It's just a room with a cardboard. It's like we're trying to break her as well, mentally. <laughs> Oh, oh God. No, well, listen, we I'll put it there. Let's see how we get on. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, just before we get started as well, I know we're, what we are doing, we're covering uh, the mid-season point in the Premier League this year. You know, loads to go on. Mm -hmm. Interesting to see how we how we get on with the second half of the season. But before we start, I just wanted to say, um, ex-Spurs player, someone I played with actually, Pascal Chimbonda, is currently managing Skemsdale United and was issued with a five-match touchline ban after being sent off. Following an appeal, this ban was reduced to three games. In what appears to be a move to try and stay in the dugout, Chimbonda has now registered himself as a player. What? Just to be on the bench. Right, so so he's the manager, but he's now re he's now registered himself as a player. What, so therefore, so therefore his ban... he can put himself on the bench and, and still... conduct management. <laughs> I like, I, I like that. Is that is shit out of I like that. It's, it's quite petty because I still feel if you're a manager, you don't need to be in the dugout, do you? For the sake of three games... Do you know what I mean? It's a lot of hassle to go to mm. to just prove <laughs> prove a point. Well, I mean, I think it matters more when. I mean, I'm I'm assuming it's a small stadium, or if they've got a stadium. Mm. Skemsdale's up by Liverpool, isn't it? Yeah. Um, um, I think it matters more when it's you know like it's right on the touchline and you can hear mm. ones that are up in the stands mm. and or they're or they you know it doesn't doesn't matter. But I think that non-league ones or the lower leagues that I think it that's massive. Mm. They need to be there. I I can't I can't say Pascal should wonder about about saying this. Uh, we, we you know we, we used to call it uh, when you go out for a walk. We're going out for a Pascal yeah. wonder. <laughs> go for a wonder <laughs> for a wonder. And it's just used to it got caught. So even now in my vocabulary now I go out for a little yeah. Pascal. Yeah. I agree Always with that. tickles me. Little Christmas that. Pascal. Was a little it? Christmas Pascal. Yeah. Taking a dog for a Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is. Is this a known thing? Is this. Yeah, this is known. Oh, is it known? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, this is known. Yeah. Just in yeah. my vocab. No, no, yeah. no. Because I'm concerned it's yeah, about yeah, yeah. to be. We'll take yeah. a little Pascal uh, to go for a Hesky. Yeah. To go for a Wanda to get go for a meal. <laughs> a sponsored Pascal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All good fun. But yeah, I didn't. I, when I was playing with him, I didn't. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if it, I didn't see him as a manager. And it's, it's a strange one that he was kind of. Mm. He's up there. I know he finished at kind of Doncaster, wasn't it? Carlisle we went to. Maybe it's a place where you can fall in love like Newcastle. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he's fell in love there. Yeah. What's, um, is, is he the kind of player that you, as you're saying there, like you didn't really expect to be manager? Does that happen a lot? Or do yeah. you sort of know who the managers are going to be? No, I think there's there's a few now that I've, t I've taken to it that you didn't think maybe yeah. would. Mm. Um, yeah. Is that, I think it's quite common, isn't it? There's been mm. a few. Mark Hughes was definitely one that put a lot of people said yeah, no, one. no one, no one could ever yeah, see him yeah. being a manager. Why was that? Because he was he was like the first, he was like the last into training, the first out, like gone in the car <laughs> yeah. when the rest of the lads kind of in the gym. He was he was gone. Yeah, pretty mm. quiet, so, apparently. Pretty quiet, wasn't it? yeah. But yeah, I mean, get, you'll get a few there that would be like a banker. They'd be like, oh yeah, he's definitely gonna do. Tell you who is a banker, parched. Got, we should touch oh. on parts. Yes, he's big had, news. Uh, yeah. Big news, you know. And like, you know, I knew he'd be a manager. Did you, he, yeah, them. he loved it. He loved talking to managers, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he liked picking their brains. Uh, and I think I think he'll be a real success there. And obviously, as a podcast, want to wish Charlie Adam all the best at, at Fleetwood. Yeah, his new, new role. Definitely. I feel Definitely. like we've got an inside guy there now. Um, I don't know because he's been so involved with this podcast. I kind of feel like, but if you're a player there, you're wanting. To, I mean. The, he is parched, right? Famously, I know where you're going. With How this. are the players going to act yeah. around this? I wonder because if he can sense a fellow parched. Of course he can. Of course well, I he think can. He'll, I think he'll enjoy it. Parch knows parch, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't it? It's that Spider-Man one where he's pointing at the Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's listen. He, I think he'll embrace that. I like. Yeah. I think he'll enjoy. He'll enjoy having the players around him speaking to him um, but he knows his stuff and he's always wanted to get into it even when I'm we used to stay in the hotel yeah. um, before the Stoke games and mm. he's a football man you know what I mean and football mm. men deserve to be in the in those positions and, and I'm glad he's got the job and good luck to him yep. do you think totally given that he is the original parts do you think he'll now parch the chairman will it go up no doubt yeah it'll have to it'll have to happen that no way no yeah. doubt yeah and he'll do he'll do a good job there what a guy go on parch yeah, yeah good luck mate 
I saw um, when that was announced, I saw loads of comments underneath, you know, where it pops up on like BBC yeah. Sports, Sky Sports, breaking news, and getting tagged in loads of them. And it was uh, Fleetwood Midges are terrified. <laughs> brilliant. I love it. I so love. yeah, this episode is really just a bit of a kind of um I guess a checkpoint in the season, isn't checkpoint. it? Where you reach this half point. Time. And, yeah, like a half time and, and as a podcast we're kind of doing the same as well. Over that Christmas break, it's an interesting one, isn't it? There's a lot of talk about this, busy schedules, lots of games. Do you know what you said something just before we started there, Sid, about about Harry Kane and the games that Tottenham have had? Yeah. So, did we say this? So we played golf with one of uh, Harry's friends and um, he's obviously had a break in Germany. The season's shut down. And in that time frame where his last game was and when his first game will start, Spurs have played four games. So he wow. would have played four games. That's over a lot of games. Like, that's it is mad, a lot. Like considering he's he's had his feet yeah. up, whatever, and then he gets into like a mini preseason yeah. in a short like, space of time yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. but that'd be yeah. that'd be the first time that he's had that. Yeah, and, you know, that might bode well for us in the summer with England. Yeah. Oh right, of Do course. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. I, I sometimes I think certainly in Harry Kane, main made you're always going to start him because he's you know he's our main man, um, captain, but. Uh, at times, he, he feels like he hasn't quite been himself. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm hoping this year that you know, with, uh, kind of with that break, it might might really help him. It does feel like that. Maybe the you know the change that obviously happened, and it's all uh, feels like with Harry Kane now. There's just a lot of positive focus on him because mm. you're only really talking about the goals that he's scoring, and yeah. you know, I, I'm aware obviously there's a lot of fans of that league, but there are generally speaking, I think people are a bit more distant from it to to kind of all you're hearing about Harry Kane's positive thing yeah. do you know what I mean that, yeah. maybe that yeah. pressure it might be slightly off them when mm. playing for the mm. national team but it's managed, obviously now obviously there's a winter break now as well which is pretty pretty bizarre <laughs> um, like obviously it's like half the team's playing it's not a real mm. one is it it's like no. a like a fake break yeah there are some teams that have gone away as well yeah I know a few, a few players a few clubs that have gone away as a team, like a mid-season already, like because they normally do it in February, don't they? Remember, if you got knocked yeah, out yeah. the FA Cup, you'd go then. They, they've 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 done it now to recharge. Mm. Yeah, like so, if you if you go out the cup quite often, like it's it was it was it was a bit of sweet, bit of sweet sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like obviously you want to win the cup competition and you want to get through, and but you then go if you do go out, at least you, you do get a little break. Yeah, I see what you mean, but well, I, I just think sometimes you know if you're you know, a big club, you go right. We can win this. Yeah. You know I mean, if you're if you're at a club that don't, can you win it? It's like it's obviously you go all out to win it. You know what I mean? Of course, but if you do go out, it's a nice little break. You get yeah, it. yeah. But then we've always said this as a podcast: we're very much for the FA Cup, aren't we? Mm, and we hold huge. it. In, in I love it. And I love. I love the weekend that we had. You know, a couple of weeks ago, like yeah. the, the, that FA Cup weekend. You know, like I I, I love those games. Like. I buzz off watching them, yeah. you know, watching um, watching uh, Maidstone, for instance, you yeah. know, like getting through, you know, like uh, Watford left it late. They left they, it late, that was yeah. A good, that was a good uh, game. And Love I it. still, I watch these games and I can't get over what we were saying before about doing the FA Cup draws and sending team. And I remember yeah. they were, I was watching the um, Arsenal-Liverpool game and uh, their commentators on now, I think it was Shearer, was, he was saying it's a stinker of a draw, this, mm. for both teams, because they don't want to be seeing each other in the third round, you mm. know, and, and having to arm up, basically, to, mm. to you know, give it a good go. And, um, yeah, I just thought, yeah, but it all comes from someone just drawing it out of the hat. I love everything about mm. it. The one thing I would say, I'd be interested to know what you, you boys think of it, and I'm a bit confused by it, is I don't understand how you can have VAR in some games of the FA Cup and, and not others and that not be seen yeah. as an advantage. Well, so I saw constant yeah. talking about it, like obviously going away and not having VAR and saying it, 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 he had to play a different way. Yeah. Because he's I saying, think you do. obviously we play a high line usually, but we had to play it slightly uh, differently. Yeah. Well, it's like, so you do, so you basically cut making it factual that you do have to play a different way if there's VAR or not. Well, yeah, because obviously you do have to play a different way because refs obviously ref mm. it differently. You don't ref the game the same way with or without VAR. Yeah. My thing is that's fine because the argument would be, well, both teams are dealing... Both teams... It's not like one team has got... But my thing is if you're not used to playing with it week in, week out, that must be... 
That must, must be. be an advantage. But mm. look, minor criticism about <laughs> about the FA Cup so like far. It. It's been yeah, a lot yeah. of fun. No, I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Well, Are look, you going to be doing one of the draws this year? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I've not been asked since my rod. Um, That's a disgrace. They should give you one a year. I, thought, I mean, I feel like it was it was it was probably the. I one of the know. best performances in recent years. I think that's that's, that's the best way to leave it. You think you've, you've, got you've nailed it, and then I mean, if you went back in now, people are going to expect you to do something. Yeah, and, like, like acting the goat. Yeah. Then I feel like it's like it's a bit like the robot. At you'd times. have to do the robot. Well, well no, it's a bit no, like, no, but I'm just but, saying you'd have to you'd have to top it by doing that. No, but I feel like you know, like some when I did the rod, and it was like oh, I need to I need to rein it back in, keep keep it magic. Yeah. I think with the rod, you got in, you done the rod, you yeah. go in and do the rod again. No. I don't. I think you, you lose. Do you know what it. you've just nailed though? Who I'd like on this podcast? Rod Stewart. R Rod Stewart would be amazing, wouldn't it? Oh, loves his football. Loves his football. Yeah, loves his football. One. That is a, that. That is definitely a go at that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's throw it out there. Let's try and get Rod Stewart on the pod. Mm. We're still trying to get <laughs> write um, it down. Yeah, Rod Stewart <laughs> and um, the Who original else? Ronaldo as well. Original Ronaldo. He's he's, he's overdue. Who, who's the other one? Um, Kim Jong. Kim Jong. I think we should do away with Kim Jong. Yeah. Then. Yeah, I just... I don't Should we not know, just like, have it burning away in the background? All right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, I, the only reason... The only reason... <laughs> I'll put a well, question don't. mark because the only... <laughs> the only reason why <laughs> I think it'd be interesting to do is if we get an away day to North Korea, um, you know, like Dennis Rodman did, mm. Mm. only because... Uh, he, do you remember he got he went there and then came back with all sorts of stories and things like that? And it'd be interesting to see that place. Um, I think we're going to struggle to get Kim Jong un to yeah, brew maybe. dog, yeah, maybe. And also, I, just, I don't know, morally, it feels a bit iffy, yeah. All right, D David yeah. Beckham as well, love one, right. yeah. That's well. mm. I saw he got skipped got over in the new year, yeah, he did, yeah, yeah, he did. Not to David, not yet, unfortunately, not yet to David. <laughs> At this stage of the season, right, if you're one of the teams bottom of the league, how much does it play on your mind? How much How oh much is God, the panic? Yeah. How much does I've the club change? Does the manager or the sort of mm -hmm. feel around the training ground change? Well, it's normally the time where a change of manager happens. Just maybe January, February. Mm. Of course, and, and obviously January signings as well. January signings, change of possible change of manager. So you know if it's not going well that there's going to be some sacrifices and it's not nice when the manager goes. I've been there. Uh, yeah, well, so if you're Sheffield United, right, you're nine points, right? Uh, you're, you're adrift at the minute. It's seven points from safety. You, I think you look, you, you look at Luton and you, mm. you look to them and they, like, they were adrift, right? They've gone. Everyone wrote them off. And like, look up now, what they point behind. Yeah. Uh, like they've picked up. They're looking better. Yeah, but I think with Luton, they never, they never claim to be anything other than they were, they were every, from the start of this season it was like the fans were just going to enjoy themselves mm -hmm. do you remember they were celebrating yeah. the losses right at the start anyway and actually they've kind of found their place and come good and mm -hmm. all the stuff that happened with Tom as mm -hmm. as well um, I think has really galvanised that, that team and um, obviously we all wish him well uh, but it's staggering seeing how they can just grind out these results that's what you want. I mean, I, I expected, if you said to me at the beginning of the season, who's going to go down, I would have had them three in and around it. I wouldn't have had them three exactly down. There. I would have had Burnley probably out of the three of them, a couple of mm. spots above. But it's been tough, but it looks like Luton are the ones that could definitely... But what is it like being in, in... When you're in that position, how much do you feel it on the training ground? How much do you feel like... Is, is it is it kind of is it stressful no, starting to turn it's, up? It never leaves you. No. Like it never leaves you. Like when you're down there like that, you're thinking about. And the worst thing is, you, you when you when you drive through the gates, you look at the the, the, the fellas on the gate. You look at uh, the receptionist. Then you go upstairs and you got all the people, the secretary, everyone, and they're all looking at you like, "Fucking come on!" <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's everyone's yeah. jobs. It's, it's it's really tangible, is it? Yeah, oh. you just feel the nervousness, and it's like yeah. you know you don't know. Like I, I know this. Players certainly when we were at Stoke, there were players that didn't feel like that. Like I, I did. Yeah. I felt, I felt like we're letting these people down. You know, like if it genuinely felt it wasn't really just letting ourselves down. It wasn't. Yeah, selfishly you want to stay up for you. Yeah. But but it's everyone around the place, and the you know the, everyone you see at the petrol station is like, come on, mm. and like if every everywhere you go, you feel a nervousness about 
the relegation that's up, imminent or, or potentially could happen. Do you think that compounds the issue or does it give you the motivation to kick on? A bit of it, both. It's hard, isn't it? You're down, you're down there for a reason because you haven't won football matches and then it starts to become out of your control that you start not literally praying, but you'll your take by any means just to get a win other than performing really well. You'll be like, just give us three points today. Someone just because you're obviously you're, that's why you're down there. You're so inconsistent. You're not getting the wins. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, winning breeds momentum where it don't. You win one. You're thinking even the next week, you're just praying to get another three points. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just think to stay up. Yeah. Look, as a manager, I think I think you've, the best way to play it and the, and the ways that I've played it when we've, we have got out of it or done well is, is when you kind of, you leave that all at the door. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't, don't weigh that on, on the team. I think the moment you start feeling the pressure of all those people, I think, you, you know, there are players that, that might go under, do you know what I mean? Or might like, mm. or might, it might be a, a harder environment than if you're smiling, laughing, joking, relaxing. I think you need to be relaxed to win football. Games. But that comes from the manager, I imagine as yeah, well, well the way to, they yeah, instill it. Um, do you think that there is an added pressure when you're in that situation being a striker compared to other positions just because, you know, you can make changes to a team and a system, but from the outside looking in, when you're starting to feel a tiny bit more desperate and you're looking towards the end of the season, it's kind of like, just fucking score goals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's like, the like, majority of the time when you're down there is when you're cause you're conceding goals, isn't it? Yeah, I think. and also the strikers will just say, I'm not scoring because I, they, I'm not getting supplied. Uh, mm. They can't just go, well, I can't just score goals out of thin air. Otherwise, oh. I'll, be, I'll be up the top end of the table. Yeah, just thinking about like... The, the, They'll always blame someone else. The nervousness and that like around games and things like that. Um, you go like, this month we go, well, we got this one, that one, that one. We need, they're must-win games. And then you lose that one, you go, well, these are... These are so important yeah. now. And then you lose that one. Yeah, yeah you can't. That's the worst thing, you know, isn't it? When you start looking to go in, got a chance that one. But yeah, we'll win uh, that one. Well, at least we've got them two yeah. games coming up. And you lose them. Oh. How does it? How does the strain play out? Does it cause arguments amongst teammates? Have you both been yeah. in situations yeah. where actually you're looking around to the person next to you and going like, well, come on, like yeah. you're not making the change yeah, that yeah. I'm yeah. asking. Yeah, fingers pointed, blame. There's nothing worse, is there? When no. you, you know, when players are, uh, everyone's passing the buck. No one yeah. wants to take responsibility themselves. That's when you know you're in a bad place. And I'm just, I'm not, so, I've not really seen that. Like certainly with Luton, I've not seen it. No, nope. even Burnley, I don't think. Mm. No, Sheffield United have been. Yeah, if there's three teams down there that would still be solid dressing room, it'd be I them three. Feels, because it feels like what are you guys it. like in that situation? What what did you do to help change that situation? How would you say you were a positive influence? I, in I felt like I could have done more. When I went down with Stoke. I went down with I went down with Southampton. I was still quite a bit of a young player. I was a bit new to it, and there was a lot more senior professionals than me. But when I was at Stoke, I was a senior player, and I was playing, and uh, I felt like I could have done more there. Mm. Like I let people get away with. A bit, a bit, a bit too easy going. If you know what I mean. And Were you doing that time, just, just because? I mean, why would you? Well, why never, would you let them get away with it? Well, was it's it not just, that I was letting them get away with it. You know, I'm still a player and they're a player. You know what I mean, I'm, a, I'm yeah. only one of their teammates, and it was kind of like down to the manager. And at, at times, I did, I did say things towards the end, like you know, this is not right. But it kind of felt it was. I felt like it was too late. And that's something I regret. Like I feel like I should have fucking nipped things in the bud when they've started, rather mm. than towards the end when we were desperate mm. you know should have gone actually this is not right but I just wasn't that kind of character yeah. you know what I mean I'm not like I don't know would that have been at this point of the season would that have been sort of post Christmas yeah, kind you could of tell well before Christmas I yeah. could tell pre-season things weren't right did you do you know well, I wasn't there was I I'd, oh, I'd left, left by yeah. then but I went down with Fulham and it's funny to say that because I never forget Scott Parker said it after one of the games and we was only about eight or nine games in and he could see it. He'd been there with West Ham mm. and he could see that experience. Mm. And he said, I'll never forget. He was like, boys, if we don't put our finger out, I promise you now, we are going to go down. Do you think like, people believed him? And bent it. And I know because it was like, oh, we'll be all right. We'll be fine. We'll, we'll, get a, we'll get a run going. Before you know it, that nine games quickly turns into 19. And it's like, oh, okay. Mm. And then you are in it. That's where I was with Stoke. Like, I, I, I pre-season, I was like, whoa. It's like, this is, this is not not normal like this is not how we've been every year and quite often the last couple of years before that we had players 
in around it and then it was like you kind of we kind of brought back the old guard around, around this Christmas period now, like around mm. that time where it was like you'd bring back John Walters, Glenn Whelan, mm. you know, <laughs> Robert Hoof, um, you know, players that you need, you could depend on mm. around that kind of Christmas period. We'd, we'd nick points and win points, and get us out of the shit that we were in. And then the the last time when we got relegated, those boys had gone. I remember we couldn't turn to John Walters, he'd left, yeah. you know, we couldn't turn to to Glen Whelan mm. we couldn't turn to I think it was like Robert Hoof there was certain players that would would always kind It'd of come Shawcross in Shawcross around then would Shawcross it? but he, he would play every game but it was a few that out the picture that were yeah. trying to get phased out that would always come in and nick his points yeah. and it, when once we turned around it was like well and you looked at the bench and you thought well nah nah he's not going to help us <laughs> Do you know and I go this way you go nah he's not he doesn't fancy it and you could see it and that's when unfortunately you're in a position that where you go down. And then being able to sort of turn that ship around, like you listen to Scott Parker and like yeah. everyone gets a kick up the ass. Do you think at this point in the season, that's an achievable thing to do without changing the manager? Or do you think you've really, if it's that sort of tricky, you've got to, you've got to change things at the top to be able to get a message to an entire squad rather than just individuals? I think there will be a, maybe a quiet conversation between the hierarchy and a senior player, whether it be a captain and just to go, look, what is the mood like in the dressing room? Is if, are, are you still for the manager? Mm. To someone that they can rely on. If they didn't know that there was someone that they could have that quiet word with in... Um, God, that's a massive in question to be asked, isn't it? Yeah. Have you ever been asked it? Um, no, not in a direct way. Because the year we went down with Fulham, we had Martin Yole, Rene Mullenstein, and then uh, Felix McGat. Yeah. All in the season. So there was a kind of a conversation, but it wasn't, look, as he lost the dressing room. Not so, nice that, is it? No. It's not, is it? Because no. it's someone's job at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. But also, how, as a player, I don't know how you answer, <laughs> answer that question, if the person that you have qu kind of probably quite an indirect relationship mm. starts asking questions, <laughs> saying, are you still with the manager or uh, not? You've got to say you're with them, surely. Of course, yeah. Got to. Yeah. Mm. Or you just be totally honest and you just go, look, I don't, I don't think it's working I out. I think you can be honest. Yeah, yeah do you then? I, I'm not, not sure... Not that he's the right man for the job. You just say, look, I, I'm not sure the methods are going to keep us up. But then equally, do you like what you're... Uh, it's a bit of a loaded question, I assume you do, with what you see with Luton, where is... They're, right. at the, they're at the bottom, but they're sticking with their manager, and you can see that he's coming out and fighting every game. They, and... all, they all, You can tell that they all love him. Yeah. You know, they're like, and listen, we know him, I know him, but yeah. I played with him at Villa. Mm. Like, top man, great lad. Like, you, I want him to do well. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not even yeah. in that dressing room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And um, you know, you, you as yeah, much as you're yeah, a Watford fan, he's great. you you want to see him do well because he's a he's a good lad. Mm. So um, whenever I see him and I see his players, like, you can tell that they're playing. They're not. There's no suspicion of that with Luton at all. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're willing to die for him. I'd say. But you know how you get Michael Bublé only comes out at Christmas. <laughs> Tis the season now for Big Sam, yeah. isn't it? Like this yeah. is his Neil Warnock. <laughs> Neil Warnock. Coolest. This is their Christmas. This is their this is their time, isn't it? Yeah, I don't. I think <laughs> I I'm not sure. Bublé and Sam Allardyce. He's Bublé Sam Allardyce off. <laughs> it's true it's though, so isn't it? It's... Where does Bublé? Does he hibernate the rest of the time? He does. Yeah, like Big Sam in in the rest yeah. of the year. I don't know what Big Sam gets up to, but then he appears round about now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. I I think their I think their time's done. What the re what the relegation? Or Big Sam, Big Sam or Bublé? Because uh, Bu <laughs> there's question Bublé's marks. not coming back, mate. Bublé I saw oh, Bublé on the Asda advert this year. That is it, Asda? Yeah, you're right. It was on one of them, was wasn't it? Asda? He? But I don't know. I'm starting. You're starting to see a few more people knocking about at Christmas now, aren't you? What you feel like Bublé's times come? I don't know. I just wonder if he's got a monopoly on it anymore. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what next. We'll Christmas we'll see. <laughs> 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 but I'm not sure if type Big Sam's time might be passed as well. You know what? It'd be also interesting to speak to a manager that's been in that scenario where if, when they have that convo with the board and the, the owner where they, they might have the convo where it says, listen, we cannot go down. So it's obviously on you. There's going to be a time where we will have to call upon it. But So that manager then has to go, wow, okay. 
Mm. I'm on a countdown now. Oh, I've had one game, two games, five games. I don't know how many games I've got, but if we get worse. All right, well, that's the bottom of the league. Uh, obviously, we touched on the top of the league, but people will always do that. I want to look at ch the championship. Are, are what, can Watford do it? Yeah, they can actually they? can. Yeah. Do you honestly think? Yeah, yeah I really now, do. Right? 36 points, Sunderland on 40. So that's for the playoffs. Yeah, but you're missing the main thing here, which is if you look at the results in the last five games, you're seeing one loss there. Obviously, that's at the time that we record this. Um, and what you're seeing is a huge difference between what was happening with Watford at the start of the season as opposed to what is continuing to happen throughout it. So I think that actually the thing is with clubs like Watford, it's as interesting as the question maybe around Ipswich Town where, who are flying mm. but aren't now getting enough mm. results, I think, to stay second. Yeah. In my view, the wonderful thing about the championship is as long as you can be in or around the playoffs, oh, yeah. you're in with a great shot because yeah. then you're entering a tournament, aren't you? You're not, I agree. It's not league football anymore. It's I totally agree. It yeah. it's, feels like a cup game when you mm. turn up as a fan. It's good to see some big clubs up there as well. Oh, it's so that, good. Like, I mean, all Premier League... Southampton, last... Leeds, West Brom, Sunderland. Apart from Sunderland. Ipswich. Yeah, Sunderland. Last, last 10 Sunderland. years, yeah. all of them. I, don't, I think you're right. I think, I mean, Ipswich come out for flyer. Southampton, I think, would be the ones. It's like Leicester, Southampton. Yeah. Go up for me. Fly in a minute. Fly yeah, and they've got a new setup at Southampton. And it, it's, um, yeah, they're a good bunch of lads there. And I think, uh, I think if you look at Southampton's form over the last few games, it's obscene how many, <laughs> how many results they're getting. And it's the opposite to what we were talking about earlier, which is it feels like you get through that Christmas period and it, it's now really interesting to see how these teams have changed from the start of the season. Clubs like Watford were getting a lot of criticism because, you know, it wasn't clear what the identity of that team was. But personally speaking, I don't think we're the greatest team or anything, but at least I see, I think we're a million miles away from what we were last season. And I see a team that can be competitive. We're going to lose a lot of games, but as long as we win the right ones in or around the playoffs and we can stay in that area, um, I think there's every chance. But that's the beauty. I love the playoffs. Mm -hmm. y you know, yeah. I can hark back to the Watford-Leicester game. That's um, incredible. But those moments come from that incredible system mm -hmm. that's there. Mm -hmm. No, I, I love the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Nothing better, is there? And do, did you as players, like when you click into playoff mode, it must feel differently as well. Must feel more I like never cup games. Playoffs. You never played You never had to. No. Yeah. I thought Not you would have. No, I didn't play. I only, a couple of seasons of the championship, I never played in the playoffs. Did yeah. you not? It's just straight up. Uh, no, I didn't go up either. I, did, I only had QPR, we got relegated. Oh, of course. Of course, yeah. if I played with Norwich, I went on loan. Oh, we won it. Yeah. So I got a championship, I got a medal. Um, so you never had to do it via the playoffs? No. Never, never played one game in the playoffs. Big man doesn't do playoffs. No, no, why should he? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to. Oh, I, I love those games. You know, yeah. like they uh, watching those games on telly were just the best. Yeah. I, I, I would prefer to watch the, a playoff game than you know a, a kind of top of the table. Wait, how massive Serie is a playoff a final? Clash. A playoff final to decide what what it's unreal. It's, it's, uh, it's actually pressure. surreal. The the. What's Brilliant. on the line yeah. for, for that championship? And, and, and if you look about look, the standard of games as well, like the, <laughs> the, the goals that you, you normally get, they're normally, it's normally so exciting. Yeah. Whereas, you know, come, sometimes in a Champions League final, it's a bit cagey, there's so much to lose. No, no, but with a championship, it's like fucking yeah, carnage. It's home. Absolute carnage, yeah. isn't it? Remember the Charlton Sunderland, Charlton Sunderland when oh, Donker got a hat-trick? Hat Do you remember that one? Nicky I remember Weaver. watching that with my dad. Nicky Weaver in goal. That was the, the City one, wasn't it? That was when yeah. they went up. Oh, sorry. That Charlton was Dick Sunderland. On, uh, sorry, 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 Charlton sorry. Charlton Sunderland. Yes. Remember when Donka got a hat trick? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, but yeah. that one as well with Nicky Weaver. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's just but, great games. But the money involved, obviously, when it goes up, that's such a, a massive thing for the club. They, isn't it the most expensive game in football? The, yeah, the so, yeah. championship yeah. playoff yeah. final. Is anyone man to call Bobby Zamora if you want? If you oh, want to mate. I was at the QPR one against Derby. Yeah. Uh, obviously, did it for West Ham. Yeah. But obviously, I was with all my QPR pals. We got a box, and Bobby scored the goal in the playoff final. But like Derby, it was a, they were down to ten men, weren't they? QPR, yeah. And um, yeah, Derby just were destroying them. I think it's only a matter of time. Everyone's down, and then all of a sudden, the ball just landed, and Bobby just slotted one. The exact same goal, wasn't it? Exactly. That same. He scored West Ham. He just, he just yeah. opened his body out and placed it. In we the should corner. get him on. Oh, but he's got stories. You'd love Bob's. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah, we we'll get. Bob we'll definitely get him on. come on. 
He's got some stories Zemo, about yeah. me as well. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay. We'll get him on. Playoff special with Bobby Zamora. Playoff special is it? with Bobby Zamora. Yeah, there you go. Write Bobby down next to... I'll, I'll um, put Kim Jong... So let me next just to Kim Jong-un. Bobby Zamora. <laughs> Look at that list. Bobby just, Zamora, uh, Kim Jong-un, David Beckham, Rod Stewart and Ronaldo. <laughs> All achievable. <laughs> Don't rule it out. Don't rule it That's out. That's what I'm saying. That's what we always say in this podcast. <laughs> right, I've got a little game for you. Yeah. Right? You've got to pick a oh. whole spine of players. All right? You've got to, in the Premier League, you've got to, I want a goalkeeper, a defender, a midfielder and a forward. Yeah. Right? That's okay. collective though, yeah? Yeah, so the... the who who you who you've enjoyed watching the most? Oh, okay. Okay, so not necessarily the best player. Yeah, just who who you've liked. Should we go goalkeeper first? Yeah. Yeah, Allison. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm gone for Allison. Yeah, I love him. I agree. Okay, so I, I like agree. him. Ramsdale. Ramsdale. Okay. Really? Um, but we I always go Ramsdale, don't I? Part you always <laughs> yeah. part Ramsdale. <laughs> I just think everyone needs reminding he's, you know, mm. one of the best goalies. Played well the other day when he got. played. Against played Liverpool, played brilliantly against Great Liverpool. save, made a great save, great pass. Great yeah. setup. Yeah. Yeah, that pass was insane. Didn't do a lot wrong. What uh, more can he do? What more can he do? Who are we going to go with then for our, for our podcast favourite team? For I feel like we goal, should go for goal. Ramsdale. I've parched him as well now. This is what I mean because you said it's not necessarily the best, uh, which favorite. is Allison. Yeah. Put him um, in there. Put Ransdale in. That said, we do enjoy watching Allison play. No, he's a friend of the pod. Allison's never been on here. We enjoy watching Ramsdale more. Is that what we're saying? Personally, I we do. Get value for money. Well, it, it feels like we're. I love Allison as a goalkeeper. Love him. Yeah, but I think everyone's everyone watches. I mean, the fact that every time Ramsdale plays, he's trending just because. The way Arteta's now caused this whole thing is that <laughs> there will always be a discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Like, doesn't matter what he does, makes a save, yeah. messes yeah, yeah, up, yeah, yeah. anything. Trending, like, yeah. it is literally like a microscope on yeah. that guy. Mm, and true. for that, I do quite enjoy watching him because he smashes it. I agree. Listen, all for it. But is it? Anyone right. that's a friend of the pod, uh, they're in. Defensively, good, it would be good to get him back on again soon. We should say that yeah, as well. We say that. Let's do that. Defenders love watching Trent Alexander Arnold oh, this year. How good is he? I do love the Saliba for me as well. It's one Saliba's been good. I tell you what's been very, very good. Concert for Aston mm. Villa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tremendous. Um, Van Dijk is obviously always a stayer as well. They, that's tough because it's like you're picking a full back, you're picking a centre back. How do you? Pick one out of. Well, I just think if you're in, if you want to enjoy a footballer, I think you pick Trent. I think so. I think you're right, and I think it. The I think the fashionable choice right now would be to go Saliba, because I mean it's hard to watch a game without commentators. Just absolutely, he's, defender, yeah. Yeah. he's an incredible defender. Commentators, it doesn't matter what he does, or it, even if it's just a little pass out, they'll go. That's Rolls Royce. <laughs> And I'll go, he, do, he's just do. passed it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the reputation he's garnered by yeah. being a Van Dyke's brilliant... back to his best as well. Yeah. But it feels like Van Dyke's had, you just kind of know that's going to happen. He's had maybe an office season last year, but... Well, this is the thing. The standards are so raised that you kind of expect that from him. But if your thing is about who's more, who do you enjoy watching more? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Trent oh, all over the pitch. But I don't hear, but it <laughs> like, feels like he's not... Although his class as a defender on the team shit he is, it feels like he's not a defender. I know, I know. Hey, I mean, look, we might go into the Euros in a bit, but if he goes to the Euros, you got to play him in midfield. Yeah. Huh? Oh, it's a banker. Yeah, I think so. Do you, do you think so? Well, there's, I mean, it's a, it's a lovely option to have, isn't it? Yeah, but it's I don't, great. You know, I think it's, it's a, there's enough one in there, isn't there? You've got Rice, Bellingham, yeah. and one more. We'll come on to it now, right? Yeah. So Trent's in. We'll come yeah, on to it Trent's now. In. So I... Cole Palmer's someone that yeah. I've enjoyed watching this yeah. year. Yeah. Agreed. But who do you play, who do you play in with, in, just on that question, England? Like, who do you play in central midfield? What was the three? Yeah. Well, you got definitely got Rice, Rice and Bellingham. Rice and Bellingham. They're, they're, they're given. Um, that's tough. It depends what formation, if you're going to go with one, yeah. one sitter and two in front. In front? Two, yeah, one sitter, two in front, or two sitters. Depends who we come up against. Um... Because I mean, you could play two sitters in Bellingham, like almost, yeah, really further forward. Because you had Calvin Phillips in there. If you, he's, yeah, he's, he's, but don't you feel we're in the situations now of a bit like when it was Gerald and Lamps? It's like 
you're talking about players that have to play. So Bellingham has to play. Oh, a million percent. Right. Rice has to play. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's tricky. It's kind of like the... I think I think Cole the luxury Palmer's of choice like here, but, an option as well. But I I personally I play Foden in there. Me, yeah. I I I love him when he plays deep. That he can pick a pass. He can get on the half. You know, he can get. He can receive the ball off mm-hmm. anyone and turn and get at at a back four, back three, whatever. You know, he pick passes from deep. Mm. I think he's brilliant in that position. So those three, I would. Right, so I'd pick. yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that because I don't like him out. I know when he's out wide, he doesn't stay out wide. He drifts in, and you know he does his his role. It's like the Paul Skulls, isn't it? Like yeah. we'll just stick him mm. out wide, and he'll do he'll do a job. But I'd love to see him in the middle, and then you just stick Rice as a sitter, and then them two. Yeah, I th- and I think Rice is so good at that job that he kind of covers two men. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so who are you saying for this this spine of a team? As you say, Rice, Cole Palmer, or Foden. No, that that was uh, that's for England. I, I, was, for talking, England. I was talking for England. But for this, which, which one? For this, um, who would I who would I pick? Like, but then you, obviously because oh. it's not England, you've got Rodri, Bernardo Rodri, Silva. Rodri. Well, that's the thing. At the Douglas moment, Louise, we basically Reece, just picked an England shot. team for <laughs> for, for the. We, we, we picked an England team. We went off topic there. <laughs> no, but at the moment we've got Ramsdale or Trent, and then our midfielder at the moment's looking English as well. No, no, no really. Rodri shouldn't <laughs> be. The, I love Deck. I love Deck, and he would be one. That would be great to get on the pod. Yeah. Declan Rice. Um, but he is name. nowhere near Rodri. Really? In my opinion. And I actually think if you actually said to Deck, he would say, No, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. No. Rodri is Rodri is a Rolls Royce. <sighs> yeah. Douglas Louise has been unreal as well. In a, yeah, in a but villa not side as, second as, in the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're talking someone that's galvanized the Squad and a team, but I mean, well, you're Cole a Palmer. Son. I feel like we're going to go. Well, with I, you. No, well, I love. Yeah, like, I think, with Rodri. I, no, no, I, I love. I Rodri. wouldn't argue against no, that. I love Rodri, mm. but if we are actually looking at this and they're looking at players that we've actually enjoyed watching, yeah, and Cole Palmer, yeah. his first season at Chelsea, been their standout player. That but goal he scored against like Luton. Do you know how hard that is? That goal he scored against Luton. Mm. Well, obviously, well, you know, <laughs> you don't. No, I don't know. No. When he run, like, when you're running and to to roll your studs the way that he done on on the sprint. Yeah, he's calm. He's nice. I like mm. him. All right, I'll go, so Cole, Palmer. go Cole Palmer. Well, listen, you this know what, what I'm saying. We it's an England team. <laughs> this is what I'm trying. Well, to we do. are English. Do you know what I mean? So I'm crossing <laughs> out Rodri. Am I? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Great. Why not? Oh, Why not? God. We should get um, Fabrizio on, shouldn't we? And ask him to do the same thing here and just be interested to see how it differs. Yeah, well, we're, we're 100% we're biased. We're so biased. Well, of course we are. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this team. Well, you know what? The entire <laughs> Premier League, all Crunchy's ass is we pick a player from each general position as a spine. We've got Ramsdale, Trent and Cole we could Palmer have easily so picked, though, We could have easily picked like Van Dijk there, do you know what I mean? Or Saliba. Could easily. All right, But we didn't forwards. because we're biased. Forwards you've enjoyed. <laughs> Jared Bowen. <laughs> Mate, I, I, I love watching him play. Thing is, he can he's score a... from anywhere. And he he genuinely, I think if he's on the pitch, he genuinely, he changes games. Yeah. I, I I think he's so good. Yeah, no, he's unreal. He's unreal. But Salah's got to get, got to get a shout. I yeah, think. but... It, it, I, is this not like the Van Dyke situation where it's no, kind of you just sort of expect it, it from him? I'm not picking it because we expect it. Yeah, I don't watch a game necessarily enjoy, <laughs> enjoy, enjoy him. I expect it every week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, full seller, 14 goals, 8 assists. I don't want to go into stats, but that's... Joke, mate. Yeah. It's a joke. He's no, relentless. He's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, and Haaland as well. Hasn't Haaland got oh. 14 goals or something? Yeah, and also we're forgetting Ollie Watkins as well. Yeah. Nine goals, eight assists. Yeah. But that's tough. Unreal. The forwards is tough, you know. Bowen, Watkins, Son, yeah. Salah, Haaland. Yeah, I mean he's missed. He's, he's had a bit of an injury, but yeah, Son's well, back to his best. I mean as you're well, the striker. What? Mm. I can't. I can't not pick Salah. I don't think in there. Mm. Bowen. Amazing. Yeah. On absolute fire in a side. You know, potentially. Well, it's not as good as Liverpool, is it? Um, mm. to score eleven goals. Uh, been clinical. Um, Sal- Salah's a joke. Got to. Mm. He's, 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 he's scores or creates in every single game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Mo Salah. I he's agree. he's just wonderful to watch, isn't he? That's the thing. Every game's entertaining with him. 
stresses oh. me out with penalties. I don't know what it is about Salah. I, don't, I never have this confidence with him with, with penalties. And I said this to someone, they were like, it, they were massively offended by it because I think his scoring record on penalties is actually all right. But I always get this weird vibe. But not of late, I think you're right. Not of I think late. he's yeah. missed three or five, isn't it? Yeah. Is it that? Yeah, something, it's, like that. It's something like that. Just my perception of him is that you can be that good outfield, but for some reason, penalties, like, I never feel, never yeah. feel 100% with him. Don't know why. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes you just get that feeling, don't you? Yeah. Um, okay. So, so Ramsdale, Trent, Cole Palmer, and Salah. Mm. Yeah. Go you on. know what? If we started that all again, we'd have four, four, four different ones, I think. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But it was, it was fun. All right, that's so the halfway point. Uh, listen, there's a lot to, to go on here. Uh, I, I mean, I, I still think... Do you think City will win, win it? They're the team to beat, I think. I think so. Uh, I th- I th- I think you don't really think Liverpool issue. will, will, no, yeah, will do this? I, 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 I think I'm, they will. I don't, it's one of those where I, you don't want to say it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like you just hopefully they just go and do it. I think it. you should say it. I think you should have it <laughs> on record. I'm not saying that City will win it. I'm saying City are the team. The, the, they're they're going to be favourites, aren't they? Because they've got play, players coming back. De Bruyne is coming back. You know, Haaland. Mm. You know, they are the favourites to retain it. But I actually, I actually think they're going to win the Champions League. And, yeah. I think, and I think Liverpool will. Yeah, by the by the time win the league. Champions League kicks off again, De Bruyne will be back properly fit. I don't see no one touching Man City in two, in in two games. Over two games, yeah. No one touches. Man so you City. think Liverpool could win the league? I think City, City do. I think league. City do Champions League, and I think Liverpool just get. Do you, do you think having the final of the Champions League at, at Wembley does it does it offer an extra incentive? If it, maybe that's the wrong way to look at it, but is there something as a player that's ticking in your mind about the possibility of Champions League at Wembley? For, for me, I, I I'd want the Champions League somewhere else, personally. Would you? Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't well, expect no, that the from Champions you. League. I'm like, it's like it feels like it's a European competition. Yeah, and it should be played in Europe. You yeah, know what I mean, and I think so. I'm not going to turn one down at Wembley. <laughs> That's that's someone that's that's a snob. That's, that's a Wembley no, snob. No. That's someone that's played at Wembley no, no. far too many times. No, no, no. no, no I, I get you're me. You know I I mean. You'd rather you didn't win your Champions League medal at Wembley. <laughs> I didn't say that. You'd rather well, experience it in a different. Like, I just you know, I feel I, like I don't I know. I feel exactly like when you you're mean. away, you just like we we're bringing the champ. It's like a you're bringing it back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you've been to the Olympics. You've been to Europe and conquered it. You want to do really? the airport one yeah. back yeah. and yeah, like I don't want to go down the A forty and get McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it to the Samra would be a laugh. I want to go to Target it, Roundabout, <laughs> get another Mackey's on the way home with a Champions League. I want to, you know, have a paella in Barcelona. Do you know what I mean? I, do, I want to have a big sausage in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> that quote's going to live on, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, being, I'm stuck in. Do you know what I mean? No. Well, it's because you grew no, up in the area. Uh, uh, it's, well, it's yes, I mean, is... I grew up in the area. It's not like I, I want to. I want it to be in Athens. Yeah. No, no I, I, I get this. I get this. Uh, the plane, you know, stepping off the plane. Yeah, yeah the whole thing. Dude, yeah, beer, I get it. Somewhere different. It's like yeah. you know, you, you've you've gone you've gone away and you've won and you've come home and then yeah. you've got the whole plane journey and you've got the big ear trophy. And everyone's there to meet you, and you have the bus tour. You know, I don't want to go home, wild man, uh, <laughs> from, from the Wembley car park. You know, like I say, and just walk. It only take twenty minutes to get home. You know, <laughs> it, it does actually make sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I thought it was quite a bold. I want to have a day first. out. Yeah. <laughs> No, I hear you, mate. Well, listen, Vegas, I'll be choosing. I'd 100 percent take it there, mm. and it is the home of football, and it's an amazing place to play football. Uh, all right, should we get into some messages? Let's do it. Uh, message from Rupert. After listening to Warnock's wife's dream, it made me wonder, did any of you ever have dreams about upcoming matches? You've got one here, haven't you? No, no. Oh, yeah, I just see you giggling. <laughs> I'm just, just laughing at the, what his wife's dream. Funny. That was crazy, huh? Did you have a dream before a game? Uh, no. I don't remember having dreams, but I do, I do. I remember having a lot of thoughts that I'm going to score today. And I would score. Really? Which is really weird. And that company's the wife's all into that manifesting and all that. You, you know, like the the yeah, earth and the energy. I, I believe and, in that. Yeah, no, I do, do get you? it. Yeah. Mm. But I've I, I, there's been I wouldn't say I had a right. dream, but I've definitely had feelings where I've left to go to the stadium. I've gone, I'm gonna score today. Really? And she's gone, really? Like that. Like are you surprised? Yeah, it's like <laughs> self fulfilling. You're in the right frame of mind. You yeah. you're 
I've had yeah. games where I've gone, I've felt that ill and I've thought I'm not, I can't do it, I can't do it, I feel awful. And then gone out there and had the best game ever and played <laughs> and scored like two goals and gone, imagine if I had pulled out. That's why I never ever, even when I was so ill, I'd never pulled out of a game or training. Well, I tried not to. You ever had nightmares before a game? I had a few nightmares during a game. <laughs> same, same me. <laughs> I've had a few shockers. <laughs> you never woken up in the night screaming no. about... No. no. I don't think I've ever woke up in the no. night screaming, have you? <laughs> no. Are you doing the dream app thing? Right, I'm just going to get it. So one. Shall we all agree to do it for a week? Yeah, well, I've got one. Do you know about these SIDs, these sleep apps? No. So basically what they, what they do is you, you put your phone next to you mm-hmm. and then you hit record, it'll only record when it picks up noise. So if it hears noise in the bedroom, it will start recording. Then the next day you can just flick through all the little records and just hear what oh, it's dear. what it's picked up. And this is what I picked up for my mate who will remain nameless uh, for his own dignity. No. No. That's a massive set of balls. <laughs> That's a massive set of balls. <laughs> <laughs> Should we hear it again? Yeah. No. 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 Some massive set of balls. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's trying to shoot him. Well. <laughs> she's, she's, she's trying to call him down. <laughs> a massive set of balls. Oh, look, if, if, <laughs> if people want to join in with this, just so you get one of these sleep recorder what? apps, right? Yeah. What is he dreaming about? Seriously. Do we know, do, no, he says, oh, no, he, no, I've spoken yeah, to him, yeah, he's like, absolutely no idea. No That's idea. That's a massive set of balls. No. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. <laughs> look, if you go on the app, um, they've worse. got a little, they've got other, you can upload the recordings. So a lot of them are farts. Mm. I'm going to warn oh, you. Just quickly, quickly. What what would you do if your missus said that? Well, I was going to say, you know, imagine sleep. if he said that's a massive set of tits. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But she like, would have been shushing him there, would she? <laughs> but what if she... What if you, if you heard your missus say the exact same thing he just said there? That's a massive go, well, I was pair of asleep. Balls. Like, you go, well... But is that wrong? Yeah, mate, is it it's just, wrong? It's, just, it's, not wrong. <laughs> it's not my jurisdiction, is it? Her uh, dreams. <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking you like you're the dream expert. <laughs> is, no, it I just feel like... is it wrong if my wife dreams of massive balls? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Crouchy. <laughs> it's not good okay. anyway, is it? It's, it wouldn't be great. I wouldn't it's be happy a, with it. The, the excuse is I was having a dream. It's... You wouldn't be happy yeah. with it? Stop well, it. I'm not over the moon with it. I'd rather... I didn't Abs hear that. in her sleep goes... Oh, yeah. What's it? Oh, massive God, they're massive balls. balls. Massive balls. <laughs> <laughs> you genuinely would be upset. Well, no, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be more upset than if I hadn't heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just would you, you'd you be happy with that. I mean, it's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't control <laughs> someone's dream. I, I know. No, he's not. I get. It's I get what you're saying. It's just, it? it's just, yeah, it's not what you want to hear. Maybe no. next to you. No, I think you're right. It's not necessarily what you want to hear. I just don't know. So you just I don't think you can even say anything no, at that in point. the morning no. just wake up by the way got anything on your mind at the moment <laughs> anything you're stressing about <laughs> I just used to turn around and went yeah massive set of balls <laughs> dreaming about last night <laughs> oh Sid you've got to give this a go well, right so there's a couple on, a couple on here let me let me just play you Some a couple listen. that are on there so they're, they're, a lot of these are going to be farting I can tell okay. already but um, so are these just random people on like a leaderboard. Yeah, a leaderboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people like <laughs> vote them up or down. So mm. let's say one of us talks in our sleep. We'll upload it to it, and then people okay. will okay. vote up or down. Obviously, if you're not into the whole fighting thing, like just skip it on twenty seconds or so. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this one. They've all got a name as well. This one uh, is just called Oh Andy. <laughs> I like it already. <laughs> oh Andy, no. <laughs> Oh, Andy. You shut yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say, oh, Andy? <laughs> you have you shut yourself? Or, yeah. or you have shut yourself? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Do you want a replay? <laughs> I don't know. Go on, Andy. Oh, yeah, it. we're going again. Here's a replay. Oh, Andy. You shut yourself. He's stating that he's shut himself. Yeah, he is, obviously. <laughs> That's 
Oh. Himself. Okay, wow. I'm going to oh, offer man. you <laughs> when do one you? called Something Fell Off the Wall or one called Anne's Ordeal. <laughs> right. <laughs> What would you like? Fucking okay, yeah. What was the first one? Off the wall. Uh, something fell off the wall. Something fell off the wall. Yeah, yeah let's go with that. Oh, 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 oh. No! Shh. It's all right. What? It's all right. It just fell off the wall. Uh, uh. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just going back to sleep. Look. <laughs> So from these first two clips, it feels like men have gone back in time to be actual babies. Like one's shat himself, <laughs> and the other one's getting calm, calm down. <laughs> Shh, it's okay. Shh, get back to sleep. Come on, good boy. This this looks good. At number thirty on this chart, fart wakes dogs. Oh, because I think I don't think you can fake that. Because I'm suspicious about some of them. Dogs. <laughs> I knew it. I knew I was gonna be, but it was still good. <laughs> I was just waiting for the dog to bark. <laughs> I, I, I don't want that one again. Can we have that one again? You know what's so good about that? I was waiting for the dog to be at the like bottom of the bed. <laughs> he was but he's, he, does this. <laughs> he wasn't even in the bedroom. I don't. I don't think this is a fart one. It's just called. I've just throw. Th I've just threw an owl. So I quite like it. It's that like random sleep okay, talk, yeah, which I think is what we're hoping for. Threw an owl. I've just thrown an owl. Mm -hmm. I've just thrown an owl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An owl. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Wow, where'd you what go? What you like, I've just thrown an, <laughs> an just owl. Thrown an owl. Mm -hmm. My favourite there was the dog. <laughs> I think it was the dog with the fart. Yeah. I do want it one more time. Uh, I'll I give you the one dog more. one more time. I and, really and, like and, that one. And, and Andy, I think you've shat yourself. Fart wakes dogs. One more time and then we'll move on. Picture that dog, right? He's he's literally laying there peacefully, and all of a sudden he's just got up. He's he's giving it that one with the ears, and then he's sort of there's someone outside, <laughs> or there's someone in the house. <laughs> oh. Well, so so well, let's encourage people like if you yeah. can record you just download one of those sleep talk apps. Well, I'm going to do them. this. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's 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 get involved. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I, I feel like that's a good place to wrap it up. Really. <laughs> do you know? you? Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> 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 We've lost all control, haven't we? To be honest, oh, it tickled me a lot. That. Uh, so childish, isn't it? But actually, really enjoyable. We're at the midway midway point in the in the Premier League and uh, in the English League in in the Football League, um, and we've hopefully covered the, the the first half of it a little bit um, with a bit of sleep sleep up at the end. Um, you know, here's to the next half. Yeah, uh, yeah. Chumba Wumba, Absolutely. everyone. Hopefully, your Chumba, team Chumba Wumbas. Chumba Wumba, everyone, and make sure you keep sending us in questions as well. Anything you want to ask. Uh, about the podcast or about the boys' careers and mm. uh, keep getting involved in the podcast because um, some of the best discussions, I think, come from people's emails or mm, questions. Do. They don't all need to be silly. No. Uh, it can be like <laughs> legitimate football <laughs> questions as well. I've got two legitimate ones here from Callum and Fraser, actually, that we'll get on to next week. Nice. All right. Chumba Wumba, everyone. <laughs>